Hello and welcome to Let's Play Dark Souls 3. My name is Alex, I am the Silvermont, and we're going to be playing this on PlayStation 4. Now quickly, before we get started, I just want to demonstrate something. Servers are not up at the moment, and this is on patch, well, 1.01, .01, which has a lot of problems with performance. I just want to get out of the way because hopefully it will be fixed real soon, but I need to start recording now. That said, let's go. Yes, indeed. It is called Lothric, where the transitory lands of the Lords of Cinder converge. In venturing north, the pilgrims discover the truth of the old words. The fire fades, and the lords go without thrones. Well, how was that for an intro movie? One thing I want to point out, they say the um, the lords go without thrones. But obviously it's more like the thrones going without lords. And we'll be going with the old tradition of Sivermont, the illiterate undead. We had the original in Dark Souls 1, Sivermont 2 in Dark Souls 2, and now Sivermont 3, who will just be called Sivermont. And that's because I, whilst doing my very first ever Let's Play, I came up... Well, I didn't come up, I typoed Silvermont somehow as Silvermont. I guess that became a bit of a joke. Righty-ho, so... Here's your character creation screen. There's actually a little bit of lore here, so let's have a look at that quickly. Straight off the bat, Astora. So, it 
<laughs> and Kareem, of course, and Katarina. So obviously the the lands of Dark Souls 1 are not only referenced, they're pretty much here. Of course, um, they mentioned Vinheim as well. Vinheim was mentioned in Dark Souls 2, I think? But other than that, no Dark Souls 1 lands were mentioned in Dark Souls 2. So we have the the oh-so-plain face of a commoner. Everyone has imperfections, but a commoner without flaws is a rare creature indeed. Northern Warrior. Perfect for the warrior class. The face of a warrior is if hewn from a rock. It's long been whispered in jest. Northerners are born weathered and old. Definitely. The features of a true blue blood, blue of eye and fair of hair, a little reminder of, a little reminder of Astora's former glory. Of course, Solaire, Oscar, both from Astora, and I believe Anastasia was also from Astora. I'm not really sure what blue blood means though. I I know what it means. It just it slips my mind at the moment. Well, I'm sure someone in the comments will mention it, or I'll write it in the video description, if I remember. Dragon Academy student. Intelligent face with fine lines, often ribbed for looking like apprentice. So I guess it's meant to be like Harry Potter, that's fine. And the Dragon Academy, of course, is the famous magic school of Vinheim. Vinheim School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Kareem Novice. Mm. The face of a cheerless cleric of Kareem, novice is used as something of a der derogatory term for men of the cloth. Kareem, of course, being Lautrec, Oswald, and Marvelous Chester. Katerina Merrymaker, who is orange. The large eyes and mouth give this face a look of jubilation from Katerina, known for its known for its zest for life and love of drink. That's the fun thing about recording things live. You. Uh, make all sorts of stupid um, mistakes when you're reading stuff out. An uncommon face defined by its narrow eyes and thin lips. Some praise it as the some praise it as the visage of a true dragon. Visage? Visage? As I was saying, live stuff, you forget how to pronounce words, but it's fine. Is it me or I mean I don't <laughs> I'm probably gonna sound incredibly racist, but do you think this is meant to be like a kind of Eastern looking character, you know, like Shiva of the East and stuff. And I don't just say that because of the looks and stuff, but they mention about dragons and things and I don't know. Oh god. A uniquely deformed face, or perhaps merely ugly. Malcontent swarmed the Great Swamp. I don't know, Laurentius was from the Great Swamp and he looked fine. That was a long time ago. Londor Shadow of Death. Dramatic. A lifeless face, almost that of a hollow. Londor is a realm of those hollow and old. Londor, of course, sounds a little bit like Anor Londo or New Londo. Is that just coincidence? Maybe. And um, oh, I'm I have no idea how I would pronounce this. Erythilian? The features of the old gods, as if from legend. They say, they say children born like this are fated to be taken to the Boreal Valley. I don't even know how to pronounce Boreal. This, this is Dark Souls 3, scholar of not understanding how to pronounce any single word in the human tongue. But yeah, features of the old gods. So, do we know any gods that look super pale like this? I don't know, but... The old gods, do you think that means Gwyn and Nico? Or someone else? Well, I'm sure we will find out, but that's definitely the most interesting one for me. In terms of, uh, you know. I don't want to spend too long. And uh, I've already made some characters. This was my main character, Mont, who apparently looks like Jesus or Aragorn. Then, uh, this lady is, mm, well, the less said about her, the better, I think. So we'll go with the tradition of silver-haired characters. Who she's got a funny ass-looking face, but that's all right. We'll go with her. And if you're complaining that I'm playing a female, well, 
I've already played through the game as a male, so I'm going to play as a female now. I'm sorry if that upsets you. It is not... It is not a political or social statement, okay? I've had people say stuff like that, and it's like, no, honestly, I'm just doing something that I haven't done. It's, um... Oh, here we go. Now, this is my favourite feature in Dark Souls 3, right here. <laughs> Um, I don't even know which one we should go with. This one sounds incredibly obnoxious, so maybe we won't go with that. Although it does also sound really funny. Oh, well, let's just go with Mature, that's fine. Um... How about Burial Gift? Starting Gift? I'm not really sure which one of these would be considered the best. I think we're just gonna go with the life ring because that's like the only permanent item here that... You know, it's just an, a lazy option to take, quite frankly. All of these other items I should point out you can get in the game, so... You can also get the life ring in the game as well. There's no, like, pendant option which is a little... strange. Oh, oh well. And how about class? Knight, mercenary, warrior, herald, thief, assassin, sorcerer, pyromancer, cleric, and deprived. Now I had narrowed it down to three choices, deprived, assassin, and herald. And in the end, I think I'm going to go with herald because, you know, they got, they got like the silver armor, they got the white cape. I think it's pretty appropriate. Um, a spear and a shield. It's uh, this is actually the class that I thought was the best for a, like a new player. Like if you're completely new and you just want a, like a safe class, I think Herald is probably the best for that. So maybe that's also appropriate. Though I'm not really sure how useful this let's play is gonna be for people who want like a guide. Well, we'll see, won't we? Now I've been spending way too long and I haven't even played the game yet, so. Uh, how about we just hop in right now? Sivamont, female, young, herald, life ring. Yeah, I think we're good to go. Here we are in our first area of the game, the Cemetery of Ash. Mm, you heard the bells, didn't you? Well, let's uh, let's have a little look at our equipment real quick. We start with a spear, which I just took off. God, God damn it! Common short spear that allows attacking with shield up. Spear attacks are centered on thrusting, but can inflict high damage when timed with the end of an enemy swing. That's just telling you about um. Counter pokes, basically. We also stop as a talisman. Once a very common item among the ranks of the old Way of White, so the Way of White, of course, being name dropped, and many things from Dark Souls One will be name dropped, shall we say? And an orthodox metal shield. Eh, nothing too interesting there. That I believe this is the um the Drang Lake shield if I'm not very much mistaken, from Dark Souls 2. Hmm. So of course, with the... we can do, you know, the shield poke, normal poke, another poke. Basically, if you want to poke people, you take the spear, because everything is for poking. How long are we going to stick with this spear? Probably not too long, but uh, we will be using spears a lot, and if you find that boring, well, I'm sorry, but... 
you know, I feel like playing with spears. I really like spears. I just don't really like them that much in Dark Souls. But, you know, I think I'm going to give them a try again. Oh, and of course, new mechanic, weapon art. Let's see what we have here. Uh, I believe that's like a shield break, like a guard break. Puncture enemy shields and inflict damage. Well, we'll try that out soon enough. Oh, and of course we have a Miracle Heal Aid, which also will use the same blue gauge as the other one. Now, I just want to point this out real quick. On this current patch of the game, which probably is completely out of date now, just for frame of reference, I'm recording this on April 4th, 2016. On this version of the game, for some reason, when you're offline, the frame rate goes is completely atrocious. I don't know how much it's going to affect viewing quality, but I just want to point that out there and say that by the time you're watching this, it will almost assuredly be fixed. Because on version 1, the game was fine, but then in version 1.1, where they patched in on online, something went completely bonkers. And yeah, so online is in, but the servers are not currently up. But yeah, that'll probably give you an idea of just how long ago I am recording this. But that is because of my internet being incredibly terrible. But you don't want to hear about that, you don't care. And I don't blame you, it's not very interesting. I just wanted to get that out of the way. So let's talk about the Cemetery of Ash after I have a look at this, uh... Soul of a Deserted Corpse. Let the fire keeper transform this sovereignless soul into a source of strength. For to be unkindled is to be a vessel for souls. Well, there you go. A basic item, but a relatively important description. If nothing else, it basically tells you that yes, the fire keeper is going to be leveling you up. And these are just developer messages. One nice thing about playing offline is that it's a lot easier to see the um, developer messages. But I just want to point out, I'm as soon as the servers are up, I will be playing online. I'm not, I'm not like intentionally playing offline, it's just I don't have a choice. Boom. So our character is unkindled. Do you remember the intro cinematic? She said, um, oh, what did she say? Oh, there's that frame rate, by the way. She was like, um, the lords will abandon their thrones and the unkindled will rise. Are the unkindled the same as you, cheeky? Are the unkindled the same as the, um, you know, like the chosen undead from the first game and the second? Well, for that matter, are they the same as the undead? Will we, you know, will we continually respawn and go hollow? Oh, can I parry this guy? Let's try that, actually. No, let's fail with parrying. Wow. Here we go. That was terrible, but it's okay. And you will notice that unlike... Um, no, I don't know what I was going to say there, but here's our dark sign. The dark sign is the sign of an accursed undead. The dark sign returns its bearer to the last bonfire. Da, 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 da. Carriers of the dark sign are reborn after death and eventually lose their minds turning hollow. So it is they are driven from their homelands. And yet, in Dark Souls 3, you do not hollow. No matter how many times you die, you remain like this. So that should give you a sign that there are some differences this time. This one, I believe this is if you disconnect too many times, you get... I don't, I'm not entirely sure how those things work, but it's like the Bone of Order from um, Dark Souls 1 and 2. Or was it... I don't know, but there's a Bone of Order in one of the games. Let's heal ourselves up. Because over here we have... a very intimidating looking beast. Sonic the Hedgehog has arrived. Man, doesn't he just look awesome? He's like so shiny and stuff. And wow, does he have a lot of health. Or actually, it's probably more like my spear. He's just puny. I wonder if we can set him up for a little critical attack. If he would just calm down. Whoa, that actually did considerable damage. Nice try, buddy. So you're probably thinking, if you've played Dark Souls, this looks very familiar. And yes, it is a, um... How? 
It's a giant crystal lizard, and it's probably going to kill me, as a matter of fact. That's disappointing. Oh, he really does have a lot of health. But is it worth killing him? I think... I don't really think we need the item from him, but we definitely want the... Um, we want the souls from him, if nothing else. So that's like a kind of a stagger, but it doesn't look like we can do a... I almost said a visceral attack then, which is a different game entirely. But um, one thing from Bloodborne is you can charge up your R2 attacks, just like in Bloodborne, which is very damn handy. Because a lot of enemies can be baited into essentially walking into your, um, your attacks, which is really nice. <laughs> for us, anyway, not for them. Of those bastards. And it's really hard to see how much damage I'm doing to him. Because I'm blind. And also because he's bright blue and the text is white. When do you think combat text like became a thing anyway? So many games have like floating combat text now, don't they? Well, that was terrible. And that should finish him off. There we go. Titanite Scale, which is um, essentially like Demon Titanite from the other games, if you remember that. And he was guarding a soul of an unknown traveller. Not bad. Not bad at all. But yeah, floating combat hex is in so many games now, isn't it? Crazy. Maybe Borderlands... I mean, I know Borderlands didn't invent it. But I think Borderlands might be one of the reasons it's in so many, like, first-person shooters. But I might be wrong. I'm trying to think of, like, a bigger game that came out before Borderlands that did it. But I probably shouldn't be thinking about that at time of <laughs> at the moment because it has nothing to do with Dark Souls. But... Oh, I don't actually have my binocular, but if I had binoculars, I would be using them now to look. Now, does this area look familiar to you? There's a big city up there, but to me it kind of reminds me of when you come out of the Undead Asylum in Dark Souls 1, you, you know, you ent you leave the asylum and you walk along like a cliff face and it, it reminds me somewhat of this. Is it the same area? No, probably not. But uh, big bell tower over there, which means we should probably head over there. And I'm just wondering, because you know, in Medulla, you can always get that little bit, you can hop off and pick up some items. There's probably something like that here too. But first up, let's uh, activate the bonfire. There we go. Bonfire lit. And we get a gesture, our first gesture. Actually, we start with a bunch, but hey. And here we have rest, which basically lets you sit down. I agree. Righty ho, let's um let's head over here. I wanna find an enemy who's blocking so I can try my weapon art on him. I mean I could just do it on like a normal enemy too, but it's fine. Stab. Oh, his buddy didn't even stand up. Okay now he does. A bit late, but it's fine. Makes you wonder, who are these guys? Are they- oh, that was a terrible attempt at a backstab. Are these guys also unkindled? Or are they just hollows? Notice they're all wearing kind of like those robes, which... I don't know, the robes make me feel like they're base, are meant to be serving some sort of role, but... Well, I'm not entirely sure. Dashing. Oh, of course, because... Let's see if I fail jumping. Wow, I actually made it. And this is our first Titanite Shard. And plunging attack. Nice. I love plunging attacks, don't you? And 
let's head over here because I see. I wonder if I'm gonna. I'm, I bet somehow I'm gonna end up flying off the edge here, but oh, cheeky! And of course, I think you can still. Oh, well, yeah, you can still fly if you wish, but that's fine. Boom! Oh, okay, here we go. Let's no block you, fool. So I can use my weapon art on you. Oh, okay, so it didn't break his guard, but it hit through his guard. That's interesting to know. Righty-ho. And now it's time for the first boss, I believe. Here we go. Let's heal ourselves up a bit. And um, in case you're wondering, this is like a catalyst. What do they call it? Um, talisman, that's it. But you also get chimes like in Dark Souls 2. We have both, which is kind of nice. And here is the first boss in Dark Souls 3. Also, notice the giant tomb there. Do you think that's the one that Yorm was in? It Well, it has like a giant tree covering it now, but... I don't know, it just... It seems weird to me that there's like a really massive tomb here. And I don't know if that's actually even big enough for Yorm, but well, who knows. And obviously this thing thinks it's from Resident Evil 5 or Resident Evil 4, I don't know. But And if you're wondering, you can't open... Well, I mean, I'll show you. You can't just walk past that guy and open the door. That would be funny if you could. But it doesn't even give you the option. little window. That's fine. And look at those pointy towers. It's great. And he's, for some reason, indestructible until you remove the sword. At which point he becomes very upset. So we're going to poke him. And here he is. First boss, Yudik Skandir. U Udex, Udex, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that, but it basically means judge. He is Judge Gundir. Gundir sounds quite kind of Scandinavian almost, doesn't it? I don't know. You can actually parry this guy, I've never done it, because whenever I try and parry things, I end up dying miserably, but you know what, let's try it. Wow. First attempt too, I'm actually impressed with myself. I'm not, I'm not going to push my luck and do it again though. This will probably pick me up and throw me off the edge. I bet he can do that too. Because I know he has a grab attack. Can you parry all of his attacks? I have no idea. I should... It's been a while since I've used a spear. Oh, oh dear, I forgot he does that. But yeah, um... The idea with spears, of course, is to attack whilst the enemy is attacking. Wow. And now it's really hard to see, because he basically fills up the entire screen with his stupid... What even is this? Like... It's like a giant snake dragon thing, or... Hell, I don't know. But we're gonna poke the crap out of him either way. Ow. But yeah, I don't like this second phase of the boss, because I have no idea what he's doing any of the time. It's just confusing. Poke. Alright, let's finish him off momentarily. Oh. He looked like he was falling down so I could parry or repost him or critical him then, but then he just kind of... I kind of went... Prod. Prodded him to death. Oh yeah, that's nice. You can do the old aiming your attacks. It's like the bonfire. And notice the sword we removed from him is kind of the same thing as what's in the bonfire. The bonfire... Oh, what do they call that word? Um, bonfire poker kind of thing? Oh, and it's up with the titan, I suppose. 
Crystal lizards devour souls, growing to monstrous proportion and leaving these great scales. That basically is Demon Titanite from Dark Souls 1, if you're wondering. Cannot be equipped as a weapon. Thrust into the Shrine Bonfire to restore its power and enable travel between bonfires. This sword is only bequeathed to chosen, chosen Ash, as judged by the Udex, as judged by the Judge, who awaits the arrival of Ash as a scabbard. But it does make you wonder, doesn't it? Because, well, we'll talk more about that later when we get to it, I suppose. For now, let's head on up to the shrine. Oh, and notice our ember has been restored, which means we now kind of start glowing and we get more health. Essentially works like humanity from Dark Souls 1 and human effigies from Dark Souls 2. Not really sure why they have a broken straight sword there. Maybe it's just to go, hey look, here's an item, pick it up and manage your inventory. Something like that, perhaps. Oh, whoops, I forgot I need to do that, don't I? Goodbye. Oh, right, yeah, and of course we have Ash. Ashen Estus, Ash Estus, Ashtus, which regenerates our mana, basically. They call it FP, but let's just call it mana. It's easier. Homeward Bone. Pretty useful. Another nice view of um, Lothric. Interesting. Well, is that actually Lothric? Because I don't really recognize some of those bits, but I'm sure it is. I just probably use a different angle. And of course, this guy is here so that we can... Uh... Oh, I didn't actually mean to backstab him, but that achieved very much the same thing that I was going for. I was actually going to do the old, you know, Sparta kick. Whoop! Man, I can't look like she's wearing pajamas, doesn't she? Look at those, look at those sh trousers. They definitely look like pajamas. Maybe that's the truth of the Herald. They're actually just someone who wears like their pajamas with a little bit of armor and a cape. That would not surprise me in the slightest. Oh, it's alive. Not anymore. Well, we've made it out of the Cemetery of Ash. But where are we now? We'll find out momentarily, once I'm done picking up these items. I believe there's something... Yeah, stupid dog. I hate dogs! Mostly in Dark Souls, but you know... I'm not too keen on those weird tiny dogs in real life either, like the... I, I don't know, dogs shouldn't be that small and weird looking. It's, it disturbs me in many ways. Dog souls. And that's the end of that part. This part. But first we'll go over here real quick. Because there's an item that I'm going to pick up. East-West Shield, the Cleric Shield from Dark Souls 1. Wow, that guy really didn't like me picking up the shield. Did he hit me? Rude. Give me that sacred chime. So yeah, if you, you can pretty much get chimes super damn fast. And that one also, the weapon art of the Cleric Sacred Chime regenerates your health really slowly, which is cool, I think. But, ah uh, yeah, here's uh, this douchebag with his katana, which I can poke him. You know, we'll leave him be for the time being. I have no interest in him for, the, for right now. Is he still following me? Okay, no, just checking. Ember, let's read the ember real quick. No unkindled can ever truly claim the embers that burn within a champion's bosom, which is precisely what makes their yearning for warmth so keen. Gain the strength of flame and increase max health until death. With the strength of fire, the summoning signs of unkindled become visible. Uh, yeah, it, that's just explaining um, online stuff. 
on the bone. Very nice. The clock tower. The clock tower? This isn't Bloodborne. The bell tower. Terrible. Righty ho, let's um... Hop down here. Firelink Shrine. Is it the Firelink Shrine from Dark Souls 1? Well, obviously not because it looks consider considerably different, but it is a Firelink Shrine. And you know what? We're gonna end it right here. Next time, we will explore Firelink Shrine and talk to the NPCs. Until then, you guys take care, and I will see you later. Alright, we need a thing, don't we? What should be our thing? Hmm. Well, let's start with this for now. My name has been Alex, I am Silvermont. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. <laughs> Notice another kind of bonfire sword, and some sort of... <laughs> Well, what do you think, a lord vessel? Perhaps not, but... Hello. Hey! Hey, indeed. Um, yeah.